34-year-old man with an incidental finding of a large arterial venous malformation and a huge venous aneurysm on the downstream side of this. Uh, you can see the surface rendered images basically on the left with the ureters crossing the predominantly venous aneurysm. Uh, the plan was initially to treat the arterial inflow and then re-evaluate for reduction in the venous aneurysm at a later date. Here you can see we're cannulating multiple branches of the right internal iliac artery. <clears throat> and you can see uh, you kind of have to start with uh, choosing the most significant branches. You start off really by doing multiple selective injections, so you kind of get the lay of the land in terms of which are the predominant feeding vessels. Uh, you can see that we already got onyx shaken down in the background. Uh, the catheters that we use, simply this is a, uh, you want a sheath which is pretty close to the origin of the target vessel. Through that we've got a five French diagnostic and through that we use uh, this uh, prograte which is an integrated uh, guide wire and micro catheter. It's really pretty useful. Um, and it will track really nicely, you know, so you, you advance it over the wire. And here we can see this is, of course, Onyx compatible. Um, this is the principles, really, for using Onyx. It's not something you want to use if you've not used it much before, and there are some radiographic techniques which really help you. Uh, if you see in the inset, this is kind of what it looks like. This is what's going on inside the blood vessel. You've got to make sure you've got an Onyx compatible microcatheter uh, to start with, really, when you're doing this. And you want to slowly inject this. What you're always looking for is non-target organ embolization. Is it going somewhere that I really don't want it? And you've got a choice of Onyx 18, Onyx 34. Um, the one up in 34 polymerizes more rapidly, doesn't go as far. So you kind of make a judgment. Honestly, I've found a whole lot of difference in terms of using these. But as you can see, this is a First thing you do is flush the microcatheter with DMSO, as was demonstrated. You have to know the volume uh, for this catheter is 0.54 cc's. Uh, to, this stops the onyx um, from uh, polymerizing. And then you want a nice DMSO uh, onyx interface. And it takes a little bit of time for the onyx because it still has to fill up that dead space. And, and you can see, it, unlike coils, it beautifully goes down into all of these different branches, penetrating down into the arterial venous malformation. And so you, as long as it keeps going anti-grade, you essentially keep going. What you're always watching for it is it backing up around the, the delivery catheter. Uh, it's not actually supposed to glue uh, in place like, uh, like a glue itself does. Uh, but, you know, what happens is sometimes if the vessel is very tortuous and the catheter can get a little bit, a little bit stuck. The reason you need to have a sheet there is so you can do injections. Now, what, what we're doing here is using roadmap. Once you start getting a lot of onyx in there, um, you, it obscures new onyx. And so you use a roadmap function, and you can see more distally that's the new onyx which is going. And this is a very, very useful technique, uh, both for coils uh, and for uh, onyx delivery. So nothing fast about these procedures. I always say bad things happen fast, good things happen slowly. So you want to take your time. Okay. Again, resetting the roadmap. Now we can see where the new onyx is going one more time. Now it's starting to come back. It looks like around the catheter a little bit. And once it starts backing up significantly, then you're kind of done. Now you only get one shot with each of these catheters, so you need to have multiple micro catheters. Uh, once you pull it out, you really you got to use a new micro catheter. Yeah. So this is what it looks like without the roadmap on. It's really beautiful embolization which is occurring here. So now that fairly snap uh, pull of the microcatheter comes out. Now you've got to be careful. You want to aspirate the diagnostic catheter just in case it pulled some onyx into it. Uh, a little bit less important down the pelvis here, but there in other places important. Now you can see we've completely taken out uh, that branch. So now it's time to go ahead and and take one of the other branches which we've mapped out to start with <clears throat> with a new prograte microcatheter. The one we use is from Terumo. Obviously, we're going to select that next most proximal branch. Most of the time, these catheterization not that difficult because these vessels are big and normal. And so it's a little bit less challenging than going through 
an atherosclerotic artery. The only thing that makes it a little more challenging, sometimes there's fairly acute retrograde angles. And so, you know, these microcatheters come, you know, with a reverse curve on them. Um, you can shape the uh, wire that you're using. That's the only thing. And so here we're obviously trying to optimize the angle so we can catheterize this. So you got to change something. You either reshape the wire or you're going to change the microcatheter, uh, as I say, because there's a number of different shapes on it. Yeah, probably need to pull the sheath back a little bit. But so we ended up doing Combium CT which probably should have done right off the bat. That then lets you get every angle you could possibly want and really optimizing uh, where the uh, optimal takeoff view actually is. So most of that is the venous aneurysm. Now, I used to always worry about these things, thrombosis, and I've never actually seen that happen. Because even if you do fairly aggressive uh, embolization, there's always still flow coming through that. So typically you want to follow them and see if it gets, I kind of expect it to get smaller. Um, and then if it doesn't, then you're going to make a decision about whether you're going to tackle that. I would be pretty loath to take it on. So that green mark is a fused image where we've marked the optimal angle and what a difference the angle makes straight into it. So just changing the view. Obviously, things like this where you can you can you can get the catheter well seated down into the malformation. It's pretty safe. Uh, the non-target organ embolization occurs when you've really barely got that catheter into the target vessel, and then it, things can reflux back go down the axial circulation. So that's what you're always trying to avoid and you're watching for. So now we're buried pretty nicely into it. You always want to have onyx shaking in advance, and here again, we're just trying to work to get that microcatheter as peripheral as possible. So the catheter has now been seated fairly deep into the other component of the malformation. And when you inject through microcatheter, you need to use like a 3cc syringe with about 25% dye, otherwise, you just can't inject through it. Um, so once you've confirmed that, uh, you flush the catheter again with the MSO, switch over to onyx, and you can start seeing the onyx. The onyx appears, remember, as a black area. And again, I just want to emphasize that when we're doing this actively, we have two screens. And those screens, one has the overlay, and the other one has no overlay. So we can see uh, the onyx is filling up those malformation-type vessels there. It's really nice embolization. It's way down into the nidus of the malformation. And so as it feels like this, if it's going forward, you, you leave the microcatheter in place. If it's backing up, then you pull the microcatheter. And you can see here, as you're pulling it, it's pulling the onyx back. And that's something, like again, deep in the pelvis like this, is not that big a deal. But if this was up, uh, you were working in the profunda, it was close to the takeoff of the supervisor femoral artery, then you worry about pulling a piece of onyx back into the axial circulation and end up going downstream. Good, good, good. 
to reposition the microcatheter, pull it back a little bit, and starting again injecting. And that's probably because we're repositioning the microcatheter. You see it pulling on the big piece of onyx there. <coughs> Now it's starting to back up along the main feeding vessel. Mm -hmm. You can see it's another component to it. Often what you find is as you start blocking off one part, there's an area of malformation which you hadn't even previously visualized starts to fill. So a new microcatheter, reposition the microcatheter, and take that out while we're there. So sometimes this process takes a while. It's this process of mapping out the target vessels, positioning the microcatheter as distally as we can get it, and then going ahead and doing the injections. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so again, just injecting through the microcatheter, always looking to see where the onyx could end up that you don't want. And you're starting to inject the onyx. I realize you see how tortuous and convoluted these vessels are. find onyx to be very safe and very predictable. And once we've taken out the majority of this out, now you can start seeing a bigger blood vessel uh, starting to back up into the big feeding vessel. And although you should never take out something like the entire internal iliac cordy, I've seen people put covered stents across the origin. That doesn't do anything. I think here we're just going to uh, back up that onyx with a couple of coils uh, that we drop into that main vessel. So the microcatheter's out. I'll just check it. Looks really good. We can still see that big venous aneurysm filling in the background, but a lot less obvious. And typically we use these uh, terumal coils. Again, they are detachable coils, uh, easily positionable. If you don't like them, you can retrieve them. And we about to call it a day. Uh, and you can say, say there's still more work to do. Probably come back and get that another day. <laughs> Let the stumbles as best we can and then come back and reevaluate it. I always tell these spaces up front they're probably going to need two or three of these. But thank you.